happy Friday. Hey, everybody. I'm super excited to have you all here for a special edition of the Christy Taylor Show. And I'm having the special honor of bringing somebody that I know from back in the day when I was doing uh, gospel radio, Hallelujah FM, 990 The Light, all those years. We're talking, woo, the early 20s, 2020s, <laughs> the early 2000s, I guess, like, ooh, really taking me back in the day. Wow. Well, you know something on this Friday, this is also an opportunity for you to get to know this amazing musician, Keenan Shotwell, a Memphis native known throughout the region for his striking creative ear for the musical arts. Jumpstarting his legacy, Shotwell practiced music at a young age with Jackson Studios during the early 90s. That means Derek Jackson M. He graduated from Whitehaven High School in 1993, then mastered the piano and organ as a young adult while attending the University of Memphis. Now, the two-time Verizon Wireless How Sweet the Sound winner has mastered evolution within the art of music. His impeccable gift for the piano has made way for his renowned reputation as the master of his abilities. Now, let me tell you. Now, Shotwell, I'm going to be bringing up in right now. Uh, let me tell you, he has also orchestrated and played for the Herbie Hancock Tribute, A Night with Joe Sample, the MLK 50 Tribute, and shared the stage, check this out, with national artists such as Melba Moore, Dee Dee Bridgewater, Kirk Whalem, Karen Clark Shears, Cyrus Chestnut, Ray Parker Jr., and others. Now, Keenan has also taken his talent to the movie screen, and y'all know I love movies, by arranging and performing piano for the 2010 film, The Grace Card. Hey, nothing this can sneeze at. He's also a seasoned producer and is the co-founder and CEO of Walk Well Productions. I want y'all to help me welcome Keenan Shotwell, definitely bringing nostalgia to me today, excellence to the world, and he does it flawlessly. What's up, Keenan? What's up, Christy? <laughs> You know, I had to get it all in. I had to read the whole bio. Couldn't skip anything. First of all, it's so good to see you. Likewise. It's been a long time. Long a long time. time. You know, I started in gospel radio in Memphis in 1999, officially. Of course, for those who even know me back in the early 90s. Uh, but most people knew me from 1999 when I started with AM 98 of the Light. And I have to say that you were part of my life in radio career from the beginning. Yeah. From the beginning, I think you were what? Keenan Shotwell and the, what was the name of your choir? Moses of Christ Ministries, VFC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's taking you way back. Way back. <laughs> well, you know, of course, I, I know that you have been loving music for all your life. How did you really get tapped into it? Well, you know, um, of course, you know, I started off as a drummer like all my life. Uh, I've been playing drums since I was three years old. So I've always been had the thing, you know, uh, being around music. And of course, my, my mother, Eunice Hollis, uh, she was the minister, minister of music at uh, my home church, Little Tabernacle, Greater Tabernacle Baptist Church. And so I was always just involved with music. And uh, <clears throat> of course, she never, you know, kept me in this box. You know, she always like, okay, check this out, check this out, listen to this, listen to that. And so it just kind of went from there. But I would say a, a great deal of who I am is because my mother uh, really mm -hmm. pushed me um you know into this music thing you know so uh when i i started playing piano when i was 16 um so i kind of got a late start on there and she made me play wow um, that was considered a late start <laughs> yeah it's a late start you know compared to what's going on today you know right, uh, they could right. be three years old and they're just killing everything you know so uh you know it just kind of went from there and just god's been opening doors and uh and just just grateful for it and just uh ran across a lot of great musicians uh of course, with Derrick Jackson and Ralph Lofton and Leo Davis, just countless music, Jason Clark and Rob Vester. So just being around in energy just really uh, kept me going and kept me pushing into where I am today. You know, all those names you just dropped are like boom, boom. <laughs> well, if you're in the music industry, you just know uh, the neighborhood he lives in when it comes to musicians, some of the masters in music as well as gospel music specifically. Mm -hmm. And I know faith was always important to you, you know, growing up in church as well. Yeah. And how has that um, influenced you as a musician, both inside the church and also in, um, I would say, in more general uh, venues? Well, yeah, with my faith, you know, the, the, the thing that kept me going and music really con connected me with my faith to a degree and faith connected me with the music. And uh, I realized that, um, you know, there's a lot of power, there's a lot of message in them too my faith in the music and how um, 
intertwined and it's very influential. Uh, music can make you happy, music can make you sad, music can make yeah. you whatever, you know. Yeah. But um, being connected to the faith, you know, it always gives you a sense of hope. And uh, so it just really uh, been inspiration, got me through a whole lot, you know, to be honest with you. <laughs> I know. Okay, a whole lot. Now, of course, a lot has happened since, let's say, 2020. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm jumping from when we first met. So for the last 20 years, from 2000 to 2000, okay, I'm trying to get this right because there's so much time has passed. From yeah. 1999 to 2020, I'm going to do it like that. What have you really been involved in just within your career? Well, just, of course, I have my, my own group, uh, Kingdom Shaw Well and Voice Christ Ministries. Yeah, love y'all. <laughs> and um, so we did my first CD with that. And of course, I was the uh, uh, worship pastor at New Direction Christian Church. Uh, where I served under Dr. Stacey L. Spencer for 18 years. Um, wow. Yeah, so I had to, I had to you know, make a choice. And at that particular time, um, God wanted to place me at New Direction Christian Church. Of course, I was still doing my own thing, like freelance musician and things like that. But I always it felt like, okay, you know, commit yourself to a ministry and learn what you need to learn, grow from it. You know, and take those tools and and to display it. So, uh, so a lot of they've been dealing with that. Of course, you know, I've really been studying jazz hard, and you know, I mean, just doing those, those 18, 20 years. It's like, okay, let me mess with this genre for a second. Let me mess with this genre for a second. How can I merge this? And how can how can it all coincide? Uh, mm -hmm. So that's been 18 years, and I learned a lot even from the um, from the ministry because um, I got a chance to put my hands into production stuff and stage mm -hmm. designs and skits all those different things so uh, like forever grateful for this season i was there at uh new direction christian church and so now i'm able to kind of take that and apply it into uh you know what i'm trying to do going forward so now you started a company and i know that you have a partner with that can you kind of give me some ideas on how that came together okay uh of course you know, my company as well as gary walk our company is uh walk web production so in 2017 actually that's when we formed the company and uh, we're like, man, look, we want to just create a vehicle for people to have a platform to be themselves. You don't have to really just sign with a label and things like that, and, you know, go through all the red tape and uh, really trying to pull out talent that don't really have an opportunity to do it, you know, just outside of Memphis. So that's the vehicle. So, of course, when we tried it, you know, that's when COVID hit not too long after that. So we had to put it on hold. But instead of just like, you know, just sitting here and like, we're just going to wait till it pass over, uh, we really just like, just, just go here and nail this thing down deep and uh, and really get the best bang for our buck. So we really strategize a whole lot. Uh, we got some artists. Uh, of course, uh, one of the first artists that we uh, produced was Adrian Shavers. Uh, he has this album called, um, well, a single, uh, Oh, How I Love Him. Excellent song. And every was the lead vocal. And it's doing really good. And, of course, we're currently working with Anitra and Slaughter. And, then, of course, you know, my own deal and Gary and his sister, Sharonda Walker. Well, Mitchell, I'm sorry. So Wanda Ritchie, okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, you know, and just birthed in a whole lot of different things. And some of it is not even really just gospel. Um, you know, I'm doing some jazz venues as well. Uh, just mm -hmm. from Walker Webb, you had the King of Shawwell Trio. Uh, so it's just a lot of different um, streams uh, that we really try to attack and not just really just, you know, uh, hammer down just on one particular genre, on just one particular thing, so. You know, I'm, I'm really grateful to hear about, you know, the direction that you're going with your with your production company. And as you said, in your, um, I guess, under the under the, the tenure of New Direction, you also got into beyond the music, into other forms of production. How is that also impacting what your company is doing? I mean, yeah, because, you know, uh, like music to us is like second nature, you know, this is what we do. Yeah. It's but, like breathing in Memphis, right? There you go. There you go. <laughs> so we wanted to put ourselves in a position like, okay, we don't want it to be known as a music company, um, but we want to be known as a production company, meaning that, okay, we start implementing like spoken word, like we do put on, you know, uh, productions, um, building stage designs, stage designs, or um, incorporating lighting and dance, it's everything that's dealing with the arts. Uh, that's what we're really covering at this point and not just music. So, just wanted to be like, okay, I never did think about it this way. You know, it's just really enlighten people that, yo, we can do this too. And it don't really take that much to do it. You know, right. so just really trying to create a vehicle for those to, uh, to walk into that. 
So I'm, you know, you said something. Okay, I'm gonna get back to the jazz, but you, you, you piqued my interest when you said poetry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm a poet, and I want y'all to know it. I've actually released the spoken word CD back what 2007, which was more inspirational. Um, this from my heart, um, oh, okay. which I did. And also, I think around 2018, I uh, was influenced by a, uh, a relationship to get real poetic and write some of my pen, some poetry. It's a real little cute book that I, um, it's actually available on Amazon. So when you said poetry, it took me back to when I first came back from Detroit, early 90s, and I was over at the Firehouse, uh, mm-hmm. the Memphis Black Arts Alliance. I think that's right there for Bellevue. Yeah. Corner from Stacks and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we would be over there Friday nights, uh, Voices of, I forgot what we called it, but we were over there. <laughs> we were poets, baby. And then I remember on Bill Street, if this is going to take us way back, um, when there was a jazz club called This Is It Jazz. Why? Wow. Yes. And they would have a lot of free flowing type stuff. And this is so interesting about poetry in Memphis. It never has been like fully celebrated, but there has been decades after decades after decades of legendary poets mm-hmm. in the city. So every time I hear about the poetry scene, I'm like, OK, what's going on now? So yeah. uh, shout out to you for that. Now, where do you do your poetry sets? And, you know, is it a open mic or are you like a full fledged poetry slam? Yeah, it's it's I'm a, it's a marriage. Um, you know, we just started in uh, February. Uh, put on this event called Notes and Flow. So with that, we want to incorporate jazz and poetry. You know, of course, you know that's uh, a perfect marriage. Yeah, it is. You know, so <laughs> Love you know, Memphis, you don't really have a whole lot of jazz venues, mm-hmm. but there's a strong appreciation. So I just felt the call, like you know what, let's let's kick this thing out. Let's make it cool, you know, because we know where it come from, right? It come from yeah. us. So, um, you know, we have enough uh, R&B clubs now that let's just yeah. try to get a, you know, jazz venue. So I ended up using uh, um, Crosstown, forever grateful for them for, them for that. And uh, we had a sold out crowd and I was really shocked, you know, just mm-hmm. like, yo, these people really appreciate spoken word, you know, and yes. jazz. I'm like, okay, that's a, that's a vein. That's mm-hmm. something that I just feel compelled to, to, you know, to really walk in. And so um, and right now we're in preparation of uh, doing a big one. In July, we're locking down the day now. And from after that, we're looking at doing like more so pop ups here okay. and there, you know, and try to keep this energy going. Well, I'm 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 raising my hand as an old veteran. Uh, and I'm gonna see if I can find some of the old school poets. Please and, bring them. Because you yes. gotta be one of them. You gotta yeah, be one of them. I, I, look, look, I'm I'm gonna break out my poetry book. <laughs> I remember um you Jonathan Richmond, who we all yeah. know and love. Uh, Forgiven. Remember, they oh, did yeah, an yeah. album, and one particular song that John wrote, he said, Christy, because for, for those who know, they know I've been kind of around the poetry scene a long time. He said, write a poem for this song. So there's actually a song, I don't know if they ever released the album, uh, where I, I, I did a poetry uh, re- reciting at the beginning of the song. So anytime that's poetry and jazz or anything like that, Call me, Keenan. Call me. I got so, you. I'm telling you. Okay. Now, of course, when it comes to jazz, now let's take it back to your training, Derek Jackson. Let's just start right there. Mm, just good. the um, the level of mastery that he has, and then of course, um, other people that you mentioned. Um, but kind of give me your your. I know you say your mom influenced it, but. Mm-hmm. Just because you was influenced by it don't mean that you would take to the water. But what really um, empowers you or or inspires you about jazz? Well, you know, um, I, I just love the freedom of it. You know, it, it's, um, it's 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 an expression like no other, you know, besides gospel music, in my opinion. I think those are two most expressive genres. Um, and I never forget, um, you know, because I come from a Baptist church, right? <laughs> you know, so we were, you know, you know, I Basic moved course. from my whole house, and I, I never forget. You know, my mom took me to um, Faith Temple and mm. to their Christmas concert, and David Carey uh, was you know the clinician for that weekend or whatnot. And so, um, you know, I'm just clueless. I'm still like I'm strong. You ain't gonna make me, you know. And so, um, I never forget. Um, uh, I'm like, I don't okay hearing Derek on the organ. I didn't know him at the time. I never heard him before in my life, but I was just mesmerized. Because he was doing some things I never heard, you know, and, and, and like, yo, this man is in, in, in incorporating jazz, he incorporating classical, you know, gospel, of course. And so they really like, okay, I can do this. Like, this has really been, been in my head the whole time. I just didn't know how to get it out. 
And so I just went like, okay, this is what I want to do, you know, and uh, went to University of Memphis and I studied under, well, of course, with Derek and then also uh, studied under Gene Rush and uh, Charles Pender. And so they really- oh, Yes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Yes, yes, Charles Pender. I, I know him. I interviewed him years ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. The mastery, the mastery that, you know, I know that you were amazing on the keys. I just didn't understand how much training you had. I didn't know. I mean, I know I just loved it. You know, I like certain type of orchestration. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Mm -hmm. So have you also through your company, you know, full circle, do you also provide mentoring and training to the yes. next generation? Okay. Yes, we're, we're looking to doing that right now, you know, uh, because, you know, how I look at it, it's no sense of, you know, keeping it in your pocket. You know, mm -hmm. the gifts is not for us keeping our pocket. Uh, the gifts is just to, to share, you know, and uh, create opportunities. Uh, to really feel like that's a strong tool just to empower everyone, you know. Well, how can people get connected to your company? And well, right now to... we're currently working on our website, which we should okay. have next week. Okay. Uh, and of course, you know, we've been putting like spots out and all of that. So we're really going to really uh, solidify a whole lot of things with next week. So uh, so make sure y'all follow him on his social Facebook, right. uh, Keenan Shotwell. And with that being said, I know that the main reason we wanted to chit chat, because I saw that um, actually I had an opportunity um, last week to um, earlier this week, the show aired with Dr. Fedora. Ruggless. And mm -hmm. in our conversation, she mentioned that you all had uh, a partnership as far as music and things. And I was like, oh, my God. And she said, he has a new single. And I'm like, what? She sent it to me, loved it. And I wanted to make sure I had this conversation with you about it. So with that being said, now, I, now y'all don't hate on me now because I was trying to create a uh, <laughs> what mm -hmm. they call it, a, a, a sample version, a snippet. So mm -hmm. we're going to check out this new single from Keenan Shawin. <laughs> to it I, I kind of put it on repeat because i was listening to just the progression the different changes i was like okay well practice song as always um you've been writing a long time keenan let's talk about your how do you put your toe in the water when it came to songwriting and composing i, I know um I, I love poetry you know what I'm saying so it's like i just love writing and really play with the words um the songwriting i just I think it's just a natural thing, you know, for me. It's just like, okay, yo, I just want to write. You know, I, just, I really didn't know I had the gift, honestly, until I tried. I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. You know, like, I can I can really get used to this. But just, you know, being around awesome writers, you know, like John Reddick and Adrian Shavers and Kevin mm -hmm. Davidson, yeah, okay. you know, just different. Mm -hmm. Anitra and Slav, just awesome writers. So you can't, you know, you really can't help but to, like, let me glean from that a little bit. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I was really, like, impressed with Kevin. Um, you know, uh, he's, I was yeah, he's around prolific. him. He, yeah, he, he's prolific. He's he a prolific really songwriter. He yeah. really is. And uh, i never forget, um, um, I was around him when he came up, we got up. I mean, he was in the car. And um, he was listening to uh, Pastor Frank Ray Sr.'s sermon. You know, and um, he like, oh, I like that. I like the one with the party. He went straight to the church and wrote a song like in five minutes. And now we we have we got up. You know, so I was yeah. like really mesmerized off there. And of course, with Agent Shavers, you know, a great friend of mine, and just see how he, you know, how he think and get the lyrics out. And of course, John, just I mean, John is like, yeah, prolific whole, as well. Yeah, you know, he's on a whole different level. You know, and but, he's an art, he's a visual artist too. I, yes, I came, he is. Yeah, I was surprised when I started seeing his 
him drop that. Multi-talented. You all are multi-talented. Just the well runs deep. The well runs deep. Yeah, now, of course, with the new single, um, as you say, you're working with other artists. What made you decide at this point, Keenan, to also, you know, get back to releasing music yourself? Well, I'm going to tell you, you know, uh, I, I hit like a spot in my life, you know, uh, you know, sometimes life will press you, you know, make you or break you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I went through some things and, you know, so I haven't really done music in a minute. I'm like, you know, what? I don't know if I want to, you know, because, you know, things happen. Yeah. But I just never forget, you know, God that like, yo, man, you know, I gave you this gift. Either you're going to do it, you're going to use it, or I'm going to take it away from it. Yeah, you know, and I was just inspired, and then too, I was like, you know, so I want to do something different, you know, uh, want to express the way I want to express, and and really just key down, key in on certain things that I'm not saying the other songs not talking about, but I really want to just really just be like, okay, this is lower shelf, you know, yeah. I don't want to just write music for us Christians, you know, yeah. but also for those that that's interested in God but don't really know how to get to Him. You right. know, Ooh, that's a great way to say that. Great way to say that. You know, and so uh, with that particular song, I wanted to make sure that it reached both <laughs> sides. You know, uh, the, the believers, we're going to get it because if you listen to words, you already know who you're talking about. But for the ones that's really trying to figure this, this Jesus thing, God thing out, hey, you know, this is kind of cool. I don't feel like you're making me, you know what I mean? But you encourage me. Yeah. So, uh, Dep Everyone needs encouragement. Everybody mm -hmm. needs encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, you know uh, something. I'm super excited about this. Now, I know that you're going to the new single, um, mm -hmm. and I, I like the fact that the approach is taken to it as as a song of encouragement. Just you know, for those within the church walls and outside the church walls, uh, just everyday people who need that basic yeah. encouragement from God, that faith. Um, that all anchors us all. <laughs> yes, Lord. Uh, but I know that you're going to have some fun with this, too. Um, you're not just going to release it on your streaming platforms, uh, but you're going to actually have a release party. Let's talk about that. Yeah, it's going to be on uh, May 13th at the listeners, the Listening Lab. I hope I'm saying it right in Crosstown. So we, oh, like, the Memphis Listening Lab. I just had a chance yeah. to check that out. Amazing, yeah. amazing spot. So yeah. please come out. I, I post it mm -hmm. on social media, you know, click the link. And uh, so it's going to be from 6.30 to whenever we like, okay, yo, last person, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> Until they put us out, right. <laughs> Until they put us out, right, right. We, we got to change the game. But uh, mm -hmm. but I just want to just share their experience with everyone, you know, like, look, you know, um, I want to be where I am, but one for the people around me, you know, and it's not just a me thing, it's a we thing. So just their experience alone, just want everybody to come on out and support, you know, and uh, hey, and spread the word, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Get it out. I want to see you there, Christy. So I will uh, be there because you know cool. something. Uh, it's a couple of things. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm about to try to show something very quickly. Um, one of the things that you have really resurrected in me. You know, let me just say it like this. Let me back it up. The pandemic. How did the pandemic impact you? And I'm going to kind of just share how I've been feeling. Man, you know, when it's shut down, you can't do nothing. All you have is. Yeah. Jesus, your family, and your music. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so it's like, okay, uh, I'm like, let me just take advantage of this and learn mm -hmm. everything I need to learn, write what I need to write, you know, constantly practicing, you know, just trying to think out the box so I won't have to be, you know, coming out. But we was just we were saying this thing during the uh during this pandemic, like, oh yo, you come out sounding the same as when you came Ooh. in. Some wrong. Yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? That's true. So you have to come up. So that was really motivating. And then just being around in energy, um, you know, with Lance Lucas coming by and he's showing me some things on Pro Tools. So I really looked at that as like education. Of course, I, you know, it was very unfortunate that this had to happen with the pandemic because it lost a lot of lives, you know. But um, but just for me personally, uh, it helped me because, you know, it slowed me down. Um, I wasn't able to do the things I want to do because I am a busybody. I'm always trying to find my hand something to do. So I think for me personally, God, like, okay, Joker, sit down. Down. <laughs> you know, so you you take this time and get a recess. Understood. Yeah, you know. but I yeah, will you know. say that that was how it was for me too, Keenan. Um, it was a, re well, for those who don't know, even though we are in the public aisle oftentimes, I am an introvert. So I love my own company a lot. Likewise. And so for me, it was almost like my every day. It was like my weekend. Like, oh, right. we can't go outside. Okay. Right. However, it was a, a year long weekend. <laughs> right. 
you know, and thank God I have friends, you know, virtual, nerdy, that kind of stuff. So I could have that kind of connection at the time too. my mom had taught her how to do things virtually. Mm-hmm. And so for me, um, it was just one long weekend, but in 2021, the challenge really became because my mom passed. So then there's that added layer to it and the world is opening up, but now I'm more withdrawn. And so as I say to you this year, 2022, I have different people like, girl, come on outside, come outside and play. So in your invitation for me to come, I'm coming because it's time for me to get outside and play again. Hey. And I'm really, I'm really grateful that Um, So much creativity has been happening in the city. Uh, I did have a chance to go to Crosstown and uh, the other weekend for the pod box, Ina Esco, who used to work with uh, Clear Channel slash iHeartRadio. And she's been doing things with the podcasting space. And now that I'm in this digital space. So she was like, come on outside and play. So I'm going to be coming. I'm coming. And as a matter of fact, I want to make sure that anybody has any artsy things going on. I have friends like, um, I don't know if you know Darius Fat Matt Clayton. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's been doing some creative things again. So I think he's now going to be working with Carolina Watershed. That's downtown. Downtown, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, doing poetry set. So yeah, I'm gonna get out. I'm gonna come and play with y'all. I'm gonna come hey, out. I'm the same way. I'm an introvert. I'm a, I'm an extreme introvert. You know, so yeah, like being in the house. Mm-hmm. It didn't really bother me. You know what I mean? Yeah, it didn't uh, bother me. But by 2021. I could tell in even the beginning of this year, it's like, okay. Because yeah. when I have been getting out and thank, shout out to my my soul sisters, uh, Sylvia Richmond and Angela Williams Cage. They also allowed me to hang with them the other weekend in Florida. So I'm like, okay, live music, pres-, you know? So it's like, yes, come yeah. outside and play and enjoy the arts again. So art and culture, that's my thing. So you will see me, Keenan. I'm going to be right there. And I'm super excited to see all the great things that you're doing. And for those who have just joined us, we are talking with Keenan Shotwell. He has a new single coming out, available May the 13th on streaming platforms. The new single is Touch the Sky. And I was like, what's up, Bishop? What's up, Bishop? (laughs) Right. (laughs) I was like, is he trying to tell me something? Right. And then I'm like, God, are you trying to tell me something? (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) <laughs> they set you up with that one, Keenan. They shut you up sure with did. that one. Sure oh did. my goodness. Well, this has been a delight. Any last words you want to share before we uh get out of here on this Friday night? Well, you know, um, I just thank God for you, you know, and uh thank God for the opportunity, you know, keep to speak on your platform, you know, and just for all the creatives, you know, don't be afraid to be different, you know. Always do something different. You don't have to do the same thing everybody else is doing. You know, if you want to go against it, go against it. But long as the content and your reasoning is where it should be, you have nothing to worry about, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm just excited about what God is, is doing. So, Wow. Thank you, Keenan Shotwell. It's, a, it's been a virtual reunion. And right. uh, I'm going to be hanging out with you at the Crosstown. And also definitely going to be with you um, on May 13th for the listening party and for the uh, and for the single release. Well, everybody, um, be sure to check us out. Hey, go to our social media. Matter of fact, you can check us out. His social is Keenan Shotwell. Be sure to follow him on his social because he's giving you all the gems and the jewels. And of course, you can always follow me on all of mine, ChristyTaylorConsulting.com. The website, be sure to stop by. Welcome to my world. And thank you all so much. <laughs>